Armband in the first game of the post Vieira era as Arsenal sent out a strong side at Underhill, including the French international trialist Philippe Christanval. The Belarusian Alexander Klev was making his debut and took just a couple of minutes to get on the score sheet. He took his time with the finish, but it was the right choice. Barnett didn't threaten often, but they did hit the goal frame through Ben Strevens. Jose Antonio Reyes was in action for the first time since signing a six-year contract extension and was involved in Arsenal's second. Thierry Henry converted from the spot. There was a touch of class about Arsenal's third, and it was no surprise that it came from Dennis Bergkamp. It was four before half-time, just in Hoyt on the end of a move to score a rare goal, and they might have had another, but Henry's last act was to record the miss of the match. Arsenal rang the changes at the break, and it showed in a more even second half. Arturo Lapoli missed the chance to add to their lead, Scott Tynan with the save. And the home fans were delighted when their side pulled the goal back with a memorable strike from Dean Sinclair. The Arsenal manager didn't seem too impressed with his youngster's performance. And it finished 4-1 with the League 2 newcomers winning the second half, though Arsenal stars had already done enough. John Driscoll, Sky Sports. What do you say to Arsenal fans who are worrying how you replace someone as good as Patrick Vieira, who was the captain, who was an outstanding player for many, many years? What do you say to those Arsenal fans? Well, uh, to, to trust us and to support us and uh, to help the young players who come in to achieve uh, uh, as well, to do as well as Patrick has done for us over the years. And uh, that's the only way you always have to be positive in football and confident. And that's the best basis for us to be successful next season. Arsene Wenger enjoying the start of his club's Austrian tour. Fans eager to watch the FA Cup winners in action. Blink and you missed Arsenal's opening goal. It was scored inside the first minute. Matthew Flamini with the finish. Arsenal may have been playing a team of part-timers, but little could have prevented this. Super skill, that's a fabulous goal. Thierry Henry with an early contender for goal of pre-season. Arsenal surged ahead minutes later and Pires set up David Bentley. Three up inside 15 minutes. Arsenal continued their first half assault. No flag for offsides and Henry eventually scored again. Arsenal literally strolling. Dennis Bergkamp then teased and tormented his opponents early in the second half. But in the 66th minute, Jose Reyes went down outside the box. Wenger initially unconcerned. Reyes, though, needed treatment and was taken off. It finished 5-0. Wenger seemed relaxed. The Arsenal players were still in demand after the game. Brian Swanson, Sky Sports. Not quite a stroll in the Austrian sunshine, but Arsenal's latest pre-season win was still pretty convincing. The scoring was started with some classic one-touch football from the Londoners, Cherry Henry onto Dennis Bergkamp, and the veteran Dutchman did the rest. 1-0 became 2-0 as Freddie Lundberg picked out Henry at the far post. It was beginning to look a bit too easy. And when the Austrians' captain Franz Ponweiser handled inside the area, Arsenal were presented with a penalty. Jose Antonio Reyes duly sent the keeper the wrong way and Arsenal were cruising at 3-0. But then their fallibility at set pieces came back to haunt them. Arsenal failed to clear, Roman Kaya pounced the score and SC Ritzing was suddenly back in it. At half-time, Arsene Wenger changed the team around completely and it took them a while to get going again before sub David Bentley forced a good save from Christian Stibbe. But instead of it being 4-1, it soon became 3-2, as Ritzing's right-back Alfred Schiefer scored an amazing solo goal. And Arsenal had a game on their hands again. They responded well in the closing stages, the crucial fourth goal underlining what a talent Alexander Kleb could turn out to be. The Belarusian waltzed through the Austrian defence for his second goal in an Arsenal shirt. Great skill to create the opening. Can he repeat this kind of thing in the Premiership?
In stoppage time, a fifth followed, 20-year-old Swede Sebastian Larsson heading home to complete a useful workout for Arsenal. But bigger tests await over the next few days in the shape of Utrecht, Ajax and Porto. Nick Collins, Sky Sports. A 3-0 win over Dutch side Utrecht. A neat move was rewarded when Arsenal won a penalty early in the first half. Freddy Lundberg brought down in the area. And Robert Perez scored the spot kick to make it 1-0 to Arsenal. Jose Antonio Reyes increased their lead after the restart with this individual effort. And Quincy Awusu Obey crossed for captain Thierry Henry to complete the scoring. National to the signing of Julio Baptista. Real have agreed a fee of £13.8 million with Sevilla. Now that could eventually rise by another £3 million. Baptista has agreed a five-year deal and will officially be presented as a Real Madrid player on Monday, provided, of course, he passes his medical. It looks like uh, Julio Baptista is now going to Real Madrid. How disappointed are you by that? Well, uh, not too much because I'm uh, optimistic and I always think uh, for one you miss, uh, maybe it will be good for the young players we have and one will come out of that. And uh, so it will, the good side is that uh, it will give a good chance to the younger players we have. And the bad side, of course, is uh, that uh, he was one of, uh, if not our main target, you have to accept that. That's uh, competition. Will you now target somebody else? Not necessarily. We are not really desperate. Uh, we wanted just uh, one player who can be uh, a plus, a real plus, and not a good player. We want or somebody who gives really something more or nobody. Well, Wenger was speaking after Arsenal's 1-0 win over Ajax in the Amsterdam tournament. Arturo Lupoli scored the winner three minutes from time. Robert Perez back in action after putting back any long-term decisions on a contract until the new year. But it was Ajax who were impatient for the off. They went close in the first minute through Wesley Schneider. Lundberg, who has signed a new contract for Arsenal, was just wide and all this in the first two minutes. The same player went close again soon afterwards. And before the interval, Thierry Henry very nearly played in Ashley Cole for another scoring opportunity. Dennis Bergkamp was determined to impress at one of his former clubs, but his crisp drive was straight at the keeper, and it turned out to be his last contribution to proceedings. And with everybody resigned to a scoreless draw, Alexander Hleb put in Arturo Lupoli, still only 18. For a moment, he'll certainly cherish in the years to come. Ajax went close to an equaliser in the final seconds from Greek international Angelos Haristeas, but Arsenal had preserved their unbeaten record on their European tour. Philip Barker, Sky Sports. Just scored twice as Arsenal Porto in the Amsterdam tournament. Matthew Flamini missed a great chance to give Arsenal the lead in the first half. And just a minute later, Lissandro Lopez put Porto ahead. Neatly done. And then on came Freddy Lundberg. He equalised four minutes after his arrival as a half-time substitute. And then it just took him nine more minutes to get another one. Robert Pires could have made the victory emphatic, but the result makes Arsenal favourites to win the Amsterdam tournament. Well, we played against a good team and we suffered in the first half. So, overall, I'm pleased with the fact that we came back morally as well. It's good to come back from one nil down and uh, win the game against a good Porto side. And uh, we created some good chances, in, especially in the second half. And uh, I'm pleased with the tournament because it, uh, fitness-wise, it was good and the results are good. So, cannot complain. And winning it as well, or virtually guaranteeing of winning it, must be good for confidence too. 
Yes, uh, more really I think we will be the winner because we can still not win a tournament with two victories. But it is like that. Uh, the most important for us is to win the games we play and uh, keep improving our fitness. The substitutions you made at half-time seemed to make a big difference. Yes, but uh, of course they, uh, they made a difference because Freddy scored two goals, Dennis uh, brought us his science of the game and we needed to simplify a little bit our game. But as well, you know, sometimes it's not only down to that, it's the fact that the game turns suddenly and uh, uh, they took advantage of it as well, but uh, the players who came on did very well. To be honest, we haven't had the best results in Amsterdam in the past, so uh, and we played quite well in the season after that. But of course, it feels really good to to win two games and uh, you know show we can uh, play some football. Do you think you'll need to improve again to beat Chelsea next week? Yeah, hey, I mean, like I said, I think there's a lot of heavy legs out there. We've trained quite hard, so uh, I think we're going to ease off the training a little bit, and uh, we're probably going to be a bit more fresher, a bit quicker when we come to Cardiff, and especially when we play Newcastle in the league. Uh, so I think we will be better, and uh, yeah, we probably need to as well. Arsenal cope without the services of Patrick Vieira. As the Frenchman looks forward to life in Italy, it forces the Gunners into a new era. Reporting from the red corner, Dominic Cotton. Arsenal skipper Patrick Vieira is on the verge of competing a move to Juventus, both the Gazette and the Green Personal Tech. Patrick Vieira has left Arsenal. For 13.75 million. Patrick Vieira has also added, I made the decision to leave because I felt it was time for me to have a new challenge. There is no other Vieira. Vieira is unique. Now it's finally gone, you know. There is nothing I could have done. Uh, you can replace him for five or ten games, but uh, we will see how we can cope with it for a whole season. He's a legend, so it's really, it's really difficult to replace him. You don't live for nine years as a club like ours and don't win the trophies you have won uh, without uh, saying, OK, he's out, and you forget about him. Never will for, never forget Patrick. We are very grateful to what he's done for the club. And we miss him uh, highly, not only as a football player, but as a man as well, because he's highly loved in the dressing room. You know, we lost uh, an amazing guy also. You know, not, not only the player, you know, he was a great human being. And uh, that's the thing that was the, 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 the most difficult, you know, when he left. Uh, you know, great player goes, but you know, great human being. You know, you don't have that. You know, quite often, and uh, that's when it was a bit difficult when he left. Don't get me wrong. You know, to lose him as a player also was was uh, was also difficult. But he was a great human being. So, you know, the recovery. You know, when when he left for us was was a bit difficult. He, he will be a miss, but uh, a miss means you he will be replaced by somebody else who will play in his position. Uh, the only uh, question mark is. Uh, uh, the player who comes in for Patrick, how well will he do? We have Gilberto, we have Flamini, we have Fabregas, we have uh, even Pires uh, who can play in there, maybe in a midfield three, I don't know. Uh, Ljungberg can play in there in a the midfield three. We have plenty of options and it's just to choose the right one and that's down to me. Now it's different. Now I'm says Fabregas, there is Matthew Flamini, Gilberto, so I think between the, those three players, you know, until the, maybe the boss changes his mind and he signs a new pair, but man, now we are all three, so we have to, to keep going and, you know, to demonstrate to everyone that the boss is not wrong and that we can play against everyone in the world. Vieira's departure has given Arsenal's doubters more ammunition. Chelsea, meanwhile, have continued to spend this summer and their chief executive has very publicly been talking up his team's chances. My determination doesn't depend on the statements of Peter Kenyon or anybody else. My, my determination is uh, my desire to win. That's much stronger than any other statement. Uh, in fairness, I, I uh, don't bother a lot about the statements of Peter Kenyon. We are winners and for us it's a challenge. You know, everyone is saying that we cannot do it, but for us it's a challenge because we are winners and we want to demonstrate to everyone that that we can be at the top as well without Patrick. I feel, you know, that last year at the same period we were on a pedestal because we had just come out of a season unbeaten and uh, everybody want, was against us and wanted to beat us. And uh, so it changes quickly, you know, and uh, I feel that we, uh, we join everybody. Uh, Man United, Liverpool, who wants to beat Chelsea, but uh, that's part of a competition. 
So what of tomorrow's competition? As ever, it'll be something of a fact-finding mission for both teams and their managers. Nevertheless, like in the two league meetings of last season, there'll be little to choose between the sides. You know, it's still a trophy at the end of the day, but, uh, you know, it's not the one that you want to win. Uh, you know, playing against Chelsea, whether it's a community shield, a friendly game, it's always a special game. You know, it's a London derby to, to start with. It's a good test for us always a week before the championship. And uh, apart from that, there's a trophy at stake that you have won before three times, I think. And uh, we want to win it again. You know, at the end of the day, if we can show, you know, we, we, we're going to be there to compete uh, with them, that's going to be something amazing. The thing is, when uh, on Sunday, for example, you know, the, the ref's going to blow the whistle, it's going to be 11 against 11, you know, it won't be about, you know, who came or who didn't come, you know, that's, you know, a game to play and, and see what we can produce against them, you know, I think that's the only thing I can say and, and see if we can compete with them on the pitch. So Vieira eventually goes. Mark, can Arsenal overcome the loss of Patrick Vieira? Yes, I think so, uh, as good as he's been, because you, you don't have to replace him with one. Mm. You might replace him with two, which has been done at many, many clubs before. And you also might change the system just slightly, which in, I don't know if you've seen Arsenal in pre-season. I think they've changed just a little bit, and he's almost tried to go 4-3-3, which is unusual um, for Arsene Wenger. So, yes, as good a player as he's been, but, yeah, they can overcome it. Well, the captain's armband has, as a result, gone to Thierry Henry. And if there were any fears that the burden of being captain would tie him down, well, he dispelled them emphatically with this goal in Austri Austria in a pre-season friendly. How do you see him performing as captain, Gavin? Well, I think that, you know, he, he's made for it. He, you know, he handles himself well. I think he says the, the right things as well when, when he's interviewed. He's, he's got the respect of, of everyone in the game and, you know, he, he's a leading figure there. Um, I, I actually think, with, the, with regards to Vieira, that uh, he didn't exactly have his best season uh, mm. last year. And I, I think they probably missed uh, Silva more at times, you know, having that solid base in, in front there. And I think with Fabregas, who we saw interviewed there, they've got a sensational midfield player that could come through and be better again this season. So. Don't you think the keeper should have got that? <laughs> That's a bit harsh. <laughs> bit Bergkamp uh, esque that, that goal, I thought. Steve, yeah. what about the game tomorrow? I mean, Gavin's mentioned it. Mm. How do you I, see I it going? Think it's, uh, I don't think it is uh, uh, one of those meaningless games. I think it's quite a, quite a test. I think Arsenal want to see how close they are to Chelsea. I agree with Mark. I think Chelsea have moved on. Arsenal, Man United, I don't think have gone forward like Chelsea have. Um, and I can't see anybody else winning it this year, certainly under the present circumstances. Well, uh, going to be help. Jens Lehmann's aware Arsenal are in the hunt for a new keeper, but he's not concerned. I had to, uh, to compete my whole life as a goalkeeper. And uh, if there's coming in somebody new, I don't care. Yeah, everybody wants to challenge me as long as I'm playing as number one. After parting company with Stuart Taylor and Graham Stack, Arsenal have been linked with Uruguayan international Sebastian Vieira. But after fighting Manuel Munia for the number one jersey last season and winning, the big German's confident he can do it again, whoever the new man is. Uh, more I can't say. If he wants to challenge me, uh, I can cope with it. Um, normally I'm up to fight for my place, uh, what I've always done. And uh, if he wants to learn from me, uh, there will be a good relationship to him. Not one to lack confidence, Lehman joined Arsenal with a single goal to prove he could make it with one of the Premiership giants. When I came here, I was told to win trophies. I won a very important trophy in my first year, it was an unbeaten run. And in my second year, I won a very important trophy as well. So um, if it goes on like this, I'm very satisfied. Always looking ahead, Lehman predicts a long, happy future at Arsenal. His next goal, to win another medal by beating Chelsea in the Community Shield on Sunday. Dominic McGuinness, Sky Sports. We're going to have to meet each other again pretty soon in, uh, during the league. Uh, but, you know, to play against Chelsea is always a thing. You know, there is no fear there. You know, we respect them for, for what they did last year. You know, they did a tremendous uh, season. And uh, we just hope we're going to try to, to see if we can uh, compete with them and get the title back. He has uh, the right age to be captain of the club. He's representing uh, the club very well. He has uh, one of the greatest records at the club. And uh, he's a great desire to win, you know. and. Uh, I feel he can uh, do very well as captain. It's great, you know, just to follow the path of Patrick and uh, 
Tony Adams for me is just something, you know, unbelievable. But like I said so many times, you know, there is so many leaders in the team, you know. People like Dennis, you know, Jens, Freddie, Lauren, uh, Ashley, you know, people who have been there for a long time, you know, for me, they're all leaders. Uh, obviously, there is only one guy who can wear the armband, it's going to be me, but, you know, just hope that, you know, I can I can uh, lead, you know, that, that amazing group of, uh, of guys. We will for, never forget Patrick. We are very grateful to what he's done for the club. And we miss him uh, highly, not only as a football player, but as a man as well, because he's highly loved in the dressing room. But it says, well, uh, life is like that, and the strength of life is like that. It's a, an opportunity for somebody to come in, play in a different way, and show how good he is, and that's how we want to take it. We feel that, uh, as well, a uh, team does not depend on one man, but, uh, and that uh, we want to show that. Well, thanks very much. It's a glorious day here in Cardiff. Arsenal versus Chelsea, the Community Shield, and it's a, a fantastic event all round. We're outside the FA Club, and I've kindly been joined by Sir Jeff Hurst, who's here to look forward to the event first and foremost, but also in a, in a coaching capacity, the McDonald's Director of Football. Just explain a little bit exactly about what your role is. Well, as Director of Football, the objective with the FA and the McDonald's as a sponsor or partner community partner is to uh, develop uh, 10,000 coaches um, with the four home associations. That's 8,000 that's 8, with the English FA and of the 10,000 in total we're about on target now for about 8,500 with a year to go for this four year program. And I head that program along with Eric Harrison who is the coach at Manchester United and we've been involved now for the last uh, three years. We spoke to Alan Brown earlier on, who's the grassroots. Our coach of the year, yes. Yes, yes. the coach of the year. Yes. It's, it's important, this element of football, isn't it? Ma nurturing the grassroots. Yeah, it's absolutely vital for, for many reasons. The scheme is not designed to produce another Paul Scholes, etc. The scheme is, is, is designed for the coaches, for more coaches to be out there working with young children and give them the opportunity to be coached correctly. And the better class of the teacher um, in all subjects, including football, the better quality of the students are coming through uh, and the boys and girls coming through will enjoy it if they're being coached properly, taught properly um, by these qualified coaches. So there's a huge impact that they're making um, and will continue to make in years to come. Looking at the main event today, it couldn't be any better. The top two sides in the Premiership, Arsenal and Chelsea, you must be looking forward to it. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's a great curtain raiser. It's a great curtain raiser for McDonald's as community partner anyway, and it's a showpiece event for everybody in the country. So we want to see a, a good game. It's, it's a game where it's, it's a trophy, but it's not one of the, the trophies. So it's a balance between preparing for the, for the season ahead between the two clubs. Although I think this particular year, these two clubs, there's a little bit of edge between them uh, for, for things that have gone on earlier in the year. We know what they are. Um, the, whereas Arsenal and Man U have dominated the game of the last 10 years, we've now got a new kid on the block, which I think is healthy for the game. The more clubs that are contesting the Premier League, for me, uh, it's better for football in general. Uh, we don't want to see a one-horse race or a two-horse race, and I don't think we'll see that this year. I think three clubs, possibly four, will be involved if Liverpool continue to improve, and that's what we all want to see. But today's game is a balance between being competitive, not, you don't want to sustain any injuries, you really psychologically you want to get one over on the other team, and probably there may be slightly more an edge between the two teams this year than we've seen in the games here in the past, possibly. Do you think it's good for the showpiece, for the, for the event, that there is that little extra bit of spice? Yes, I do, because it's competitive. People are coming here not to see two teams, you know, prance about and not make a tackle all afternoon. You know, there's going to be 70 odd thousand people here from, from both clubs who still want to see their team win. So the edge will be there and we, we want to see that. Now, all football's got to be competitive, but we do know it's not the be all and end all uh, this year, whether one team wins or loses. One issue I'd like to ask you about is the, the fact that Chelsea can go out and buy many English players. You're an English legend yourself, Arsenal, not really in, in the market for them because they simply can't afford it. I mean, is it, is it dangerous the way that it's going that Chelsea are being able to buy so many high-priced players? I don't think it's dangerous. I, I think it's healthy that another club have come on the scene. Mm. I don't think it's, it's going to be quite predictably a forecast, as many people said, they're going to take over the game in the next 10 years. Football is not like that. Sport is not like that. And if you go back to, say, Tiger Woods in five years ago when he won by a lot of uh, uh, points in winning the, the various championships he's won, people said he would dominate the game. And he hasn't quite. There have been other winners over the last four or five years. And I think it's going to be competitive. I think it's not just about the money. I mean, you've got to, you've got to really say, well, Chelsea had a couple of good players there before he, the, he turned up. 
uh, and who were really the mainstay of the club last year. You look at John Terry from the back, came through the system, young player called Frank Lampard, who was terrific at West Ham, and we knew he'd be a terrific player, and they've had huge impacts, and they were already there, existing players. Uh, I wouldn't say it's unfair. The, the, the powerful clubs are always going to have the money, always going to, and they, that's already happened. And you've got another club in that list now with Chelsea. And if three clubs are going to try and dominate or, or compete, that's better than two doing it. And just very quickly, how do you regard the relationship between Wenger and Mourinho, two sort of great managers? Well, Mourinho said he's a great manager himself. I've no idea what their relationship is. I don't know either of them that particularly well. I've never, I've never met uh, Jose Mourinho, but he's very charismatic. And my, my wife likes turning up at the end of a game now to watch what he's got to say and how he says it. So that's been good for the game in the media as well. Um, I think they respect each other. They're both terrific managers, uh, as they both already proved. Um, how they get on personally, uh, I've, I've no idea. But uh, there's, it, it's a hugely competitive game between two hugely successful and competitive sets of uh, fans and managers and players. And I'm sure they have the utmost respect for each other's ability. What's your prediction? You're a footballing authority. How's it going to go? Ah, I'm a football authority here. There. Yes, don't take notice of me. Don't, <laughs> please don't have a bet on it for whatever I say. I just think, uh, well, let's put it this way. Uh, director of football for McDonald's picks uh, Chelsea. Uh, coach uh, Eric Harrison picks Arsenal and our coach of the year Alan Brown says a draw and on penalties to <laughs> to Arsenal <laughs> pick the bones out of that thank you it's been a, a pleasure to speak to you ahead of the the big game. that's an English legend verdict on proceedings we'll be speaking to a Scottish legend shortly Kenny Dudley back to you he is a legend, it's a legend isn't it? no I'm going with legend <laughs> for isn't uh, remember, you can see all the action from the stadium. It's live from well, and John Hollins will be in the studio watching the game with us. Okay. And the atmosphere is building very much here at the Millennium Stadium. And I've kindly been joined by a cross section of the fans that are going to be enjoying the game later on. Let's first look at Chelsea. So, looking forward to it. 2-1 win. Come on, you blues. How are the new signings going to settle in, do you think? Asia Del Orno's in there. Sean Wright Phillips might be uh, there. Wright Phillips. Three goals for Wright Phillips. <laughs> now, let's go, let's go over here. Let's get, a, let's get a female perspective on things. Jose Mourinho's back. Looking forward to seeing him. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's absolutely fantastic bloke. It's got to be absolutely up What's there with the number one. What's your opinion can't say that. Now, how do you think it's going to go? Because it's the precursor to the, the big season. Could Chelsea win the title again? Do you think oh, so? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. Easy. Easy, yeah. I think no struggle, problem. But, um, I still think they will actually class it. Probably less points this year, but more. OK, hang on a minute. Let's have a... Let's all laugh at Tottenham. <laughs> OK, well, let's maybe speak to some more people that would like to laugh at Tottenham, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Arsenal fans, they say that they are. Arsenal! Arsenal fans, Chelsea fans say that they're going to win the title again. Do you think you can prove something today that you're going to be back up there? Yes, of course we can. We've got, we've got the players that we can to do it now. And we've uh, brought in a new player. <laughs> and all they think they can just get the money and do it. But they yeah. might not have the team to do it in the end. Let's talk about the fact that there's no Patrick Vieira anymore. Thierry Henry's your new skipper. That must be a great situation for oh, you. Come on, though. I mean, Thierry Henry's the new man in there. He's the new skipper, eh? But we've got a nice few young players coming through, like Fabregas and people like that. So I reckon they're going to do the business today. All right, first of all, let's, let's have a little uh, bit of orchestration here. Let's have an Arsenal song, first of all. After you, go away. We're in a no bank, we're in a no bank, we're in a no bank. Hi, Mary! We're in a no bank, we're in a no bank, we're in a no bank. Hi, Mary! OK. Shh. And now, a Chelsea song, if we can. Is there a Chelsea song? Shattering! Fantastic. Well, Chelsea do have the Premiership bragging rights, don't they? They're the champions. Let's see how it unfolds in the Community Shield. Adam, thanks very much. You can see all the action from the Millennium Stadium live from 2.30 on Sky Sports 1. Like the guy in the sunglasses, he said it'd be 2-1. Sean Wright Phillips scoring three goals. Clever. <laughs> 
Well, thanks very much. The clock is ticking and the excitement is building towards Arsenal versus Chelsea in the Community Shield. And I've very kindly been joined by a veteran of many a charity shield in his day, Kenny Dalglish. A pleasure to speak to you. How are you, first of all? Very well, Adam. Yes, not a problem. Now, first of all, let's talk about the, the main event, Arsenal versus Chelsea. How do you think, first of all, it's going to pan out as far as you're concerned? I think the most important thing for these games is that it's a reflection in the, the previous season. And both uh, both these clubs have been successful the previous season. And they'll probably set the goal out this season to be in the Charity Shield again next year or Community Shield. Um, but I think it's the two best teams in, in England last year that are playing here today. Uh, Chelsea were worthy champions and Arsenal might have been a little bit fortunate in the cup final um, against Manchester United, but they won it and they're here on merit and they're a great side as well. So I think it's a, it's a great opening for, uh, for the, the season and it's also um, great for some charities to get well rewarded from the people that turn up here. How do you regard Jose Mourinho as a, as a character? Is he, is he a, a man that interests you? Um, I think he's certainly a character. He's, he's, he did fantastically well last year. He did well at Porto. Um, and he's been in the game a long time and this is his first over the last three or four years he's, he's had a bit of success but he's somebody that, that brings a bit of publicity to the game mm. not always good but he's, he's good and he's done his job very well and he's uh, I think the Chelsea situation is one that every club would love to have but they've got it and good luck to them and as I say they got a success last year and I'm sure he wants to build on that and as far as Arsenal concerned I suppose it's, it's a test to see how they are going to cope without Patrick Vieira perhaps of course, it's a test to, without him. He's, uh, he's been a, a pillar for them and another success at the FAD. And he's been in a long time with Arsene Wenger, but they don't have him now, so they just need to get on with it. But they're still a really exciting see, tight team there. They pass it really well, they're quick, uh, they're very incisive. I think defensively, probably Chelsea are a little bit stronger than Arsenal, but um, it's, it's going to be an interesting game. And Arsenal will be there thereabouts at the end as well. And the money that's flying around, it's, it's quite extraordinary at times. Is it something that you think that's, it's, it's good? It's good for the game? It's good that Chelsea have, got, have been able to bring in so many big players? Uh, I think it's good for Chelsea, but I think it's also good for some other clubs. West Ham benefited from the three players. Man City got £21 million for Sean Wright Phillips, which helped them if they had any financial problems. Um, so if the money's been spread around in, in our game, then it's not so bad. When it starts to drift out abroad, then... It's a bit of a problem, but the money's not coming out of the game really, it's coming out of Abramovich's pocket, so it's not so bad for the football. But it's, it's, if you can see the best players here um, and they, they've got the, the finances to bring it, then it's going to be good for our game. I think the Premier League's get better and better every year, so no. I think this is just another sign that it's, it's really moving up the status. Now that's the main event, but you're also here in another capacity. You're very proactive as far as McDonald's go, up, up in Scotland, sort of directing their footballing coaching up there. I mean, it's important for it to be sort of meshing in well up in Scotland, I suppose, from your perspective. Well, f for Scotland, it's brilliant um, because there's not a great deal of finance in Scotland in the, in the game. There's not as much as for us down here. And McDonald's put a lot of money into grassroots soccer and their achievement was to try and get um, school teachers educated to pass on that information to the kids and it's been brilliant, it's been surpassed all expectations, uh, the level of success of it and the most important thing is the kids are out there and they're really enjoying it and it's not boys, it's girls as well so it's going really well and if they're not going to be players at least they're getting a bit of exercise which is really important for them and they're getting back into the way of things and for us uh, the McDonald's scheme in Scotland is a godsend and I'm sure it's a, in England as well uh, they've gone for nearly 10,000 coaches now that have done work, uh, nationwide so it's obviously that success story speaks for itself for us in Scotland they just hope that it adds to something in the years to come uh, everyone really enjoys it when they go there the smiles on the kids faces are brilliant um, we just hope maybe five six years time uh, the Scottish national team is going to see a few players that have come through this system it would be nice to have some Scots out here today perhaps wouldn't it I think you're so to find one I may be the only one here <laughs> well, Kenny, thanks very much. First, quickly, what's your prediction for today? How, how's it going to go? Uh, I think it will be Chelsea, but I think it's going to be tight. It could even go to penalties again. Well, Kenny, pleasure to speak to you. Maybe next year there might be a, there might be a, a Scottish player on the pitch, perhaps. But with that, it's back to the studio. The clock's ticking. Adam, thanks very much. Looking forward to kick off. Uh, all the action from the Millennium Stadium is live next on Sky Sports 1. Kick off at 3 o'clock. He looked very trendy today, Kenny Dalglish, I thought. <laughs> now, Ian Dow. Let's hear it for Kenny Dalglish. 
if we can settle oh. down and have a very, very oh. quick word with some of them. So, first of all, which way is it going to go today? Oh. Two, oh. two one, Arsenal! Oh. Yes. Who's going to be the key man, do you think? Two, one, oh, it's got to be Henri in here. Three goals, hat trick, all the way. The new captain, Henri. Are you going to miss Vieira today, do you think? Antonio Reyes. Now, is it, is it a big part of your life to beat Chelsea today? OK, well, hang on a minute. There's a rogue, there's a rogue among, in our midst. Chelsea, you're, you're outnumbered here. Do you think, do you think it's going to be your day today? Do you think it's going to be your day today? Crespo, all the way. Crespo. the Crespo today. Can you beat Arsenal today? Who should be? Who should be? Who is Arsenal? Who should be? Who should be? Who should be? I think, I think you better get somewhere safe. <laughs> and maybe escape. It's back to you in the studio. Awesome. Adam, thanks very much indeed. A little bit more subdued inside the stadium. Alexander Klev, the Arsenal new signing, warming up there. He's not in the starting lineup this afternoon. Jumberg and Pires are the two wide men for Arsene Wenger's side. Klev uh, on the bench, the centre of midfield. All eyes on the youngsters, Fabregas and Flamini. No Patrick Vieira anymore, of course, for the Arsenal. Up front, it's Bergkamp and Henri, the familiar faces. The back four is Lauren Torre, Senderos and Cole Lehman in goal. John Hollands will be with us in a few minutes to talk over uh, the lineups, what he makes of that, and also what he makes of the Chelsea side. Good Johnson, Robin, Drogba and Duff all in the starting lineup for Chelsea. Robin has recovered from a hamstring injury. He starts. Sean Wright Phillips is on the bench for Chelsea along with Hernan Crespo. Those two miss out on starting places this afternoon. Remember, the action is live on Sky Sports 1. We'll keep you up to date uh, with everything that happens here on Sky Sports News. The programme on Sky Sports 1 has started right now. It's at 3 o'clock. We're about 20 minutes away. In the Community Shield. The Premiership champions won 2-1 thanks to two goals from Didier Drogba. The FA Cup holders responded with a goal from Cesc Fabregas. The Community Shield, a friendly, some hope. First, though, an impeccably observed minute silence by these London teams for victims of the London bombings. Seven minutes later, Arsenal fans were silenced again. Didier Drogba, much criticised, but spot on this time. What was that about a friendly? Makaleli and Fabregas picking up the first cards of the game. Colo Torre found himself in front of goal. Petr Cech always had it covered. In the second half, Wenger stooped as Chelsea continued to conquer. DD is for Didier Drogba and for dogged determination. That's what he showed and the scoreboard showed 2-0. But not for long, six minutes later, Cesc Fabregas with this. Check, no chance. And from Petr Cech to Big Cech, Chelsea's new £21 million signing came on for the last 21 minutes. Despite last season's Colgate shenanigans, Ashley Cole still seems determined to join the Chelsea ranks. But Arsenal's late free kick came to naught. Mourinho's first ever win over Wenger, but Chelsea beware. Community Shield winners haven't gone on to win the Premiership for almost a decade. Gary Cottrell, Sky Sports. Jose, was it important to get your first win over Arsene Wenger? No, I didn't. I didn't beat Arsene Wenger. This this is not about managers. It's about teams and and clubs. Arsenal uh, lost for the first time against Chelsea. I think uh, for 20 matches or or for a few years. I think Chelsea just beat them in in the Champions League. So. That's, that's always good, but I think no consequence for the future. I think it was a very even game and uh, we were uh, it was a good preparation. It's what you look for. Well, I feel that uh, physically we sustained a good level uh, for 90 minutes and as well technically we, we lost some balls in the second half maybe, but uh, overall I'm happy with the quality of our game. I think the team who played better as a team uh, won and, uh, and deserved that victory. I think Arsenal show again the good team they are, and because of that the game was open and closed until the last seconds. But uh, I think no consequences for the future. This is over, we won the, the, the trophy, we are happy with that, and next week uh, new live and new competition. You meet Chelsea in two weeks' time, does that give them any advantage in your eyes? Not in my eyes, 
it was a good preparation today for the championship and uh, we'll, uh, you will see a good Arsenal side, don't worry. What can you tell us about Michael Essien? What's the latest? We understand that Leon have put a deadline on today for Chelsea to make an acceptable offer. I have no... In this moment, I, I know nothing more than I knew one or two days ago. Uh, Chelsea made an offer, um, and if they accept the offer, Essien uh, will join us. If they don't accept the offer, Essien stays in, in Lyon, I think, is, is a simple situation. They have to accept or not to accept. It's simple. Are you keeping an eye on the Jermaine Genus situation at Newcastle? There are noises coming out that perhaps he is unsettled? Well, I keep an eye uh, on the whole world and uh, we'll make a decision uh, when it is needed. But, you know, uh, what is important at the moment is to focus on the quality we have and not uh, too much expect uh, uh, to make many buys. Well, some charity work for Ashley Cole 70 minutes before he lost his appeal at the Premier League hearing. Arsenal's defender prepared to talk about the David Rowe Castle Trust and Arsenal's chances for the season, not the appeal hearing. How do you think Arsenal compare to Chelsea, Manchester United? All good teams with, with, with great players. It's, it's going to be a tough season for, for all them teams, not just them three you mentioned. There's teams like Liverpool and Everton. Uh, we've got good, good players again now, so it's going to be tough this season, but... We're confident in, in how we play and, and the players that we've got here and, and we think we can win it. The Arsenal players are moving on from their defeat in the Community Shields after Didier Drogba scored twice for Chelsea. What upbeat if it weren't, it weren't the end of the end of the season. But I think we was a little bit disappointed how we, how we conceded the goals, but it happens and it's not a big thing that we lost and we just got to concentrate now and, and train well. And of course on Sunday we'll have a tough game against Newcastle. The pitch is nearly ready to stage Arsenal's Premiership opener against Newcastle in their last season. It to win it here last season, it'll be a great achievement for the club and of course for the fans. For now, Cole aims to raise awareness for Arsenal's difficult time. Sky Sports.